Let's face it, we have all been in situations like this and we can't really help ourselves. So that's why I made this. Since I already had an idea in my head, I just started gathering all components that I needed for the build, starting with experimental board, Arduino, sound sensor, servo motor and some wires. I just started off by poking all of the components in board for testing. I actually had no clue what was I doing, so later I wrote the circuit diagram which you can find in the link in the description, as well as all other stuff that you will see later in video. After fine tuning the sound sensor, I managed to write some simple code which enabled me to trigger the servo on high volume change. Next, I use my 3D modeling powers to create two main parts, which I also 3D printed afterwards and after cleaning all of the support, they were ready for use. Now, it's time to move from experimental board to perf board, to which I will solder components later, but before that I had to cut it to perfectly match the size of 3D printed body, and I also drilled some holes, which we actually won't need and you will see later why. Then I began soldering components, starting with Arduino, I had to make some slight modifications like cutting servo connector and extending sound sensor pins, I decided to solder everything directly with solder bridges on the other side, because it is the cleanest soldering process. Next, I simply tested if everything worked so that Arduino doesn't go to white smoke, and it did work as I expected. And here is a quick sneak peek of how it should work in the end. Obviously it's not working like it's supposed to, because it is not tuned in yet. I also removed the microphone from sensor and placed it in supposed position above phone's speaker. And as I mentioned earlier, this is how I miserably failed while 3D modeling the holes. They were too low so the phone couldn't slide in properly, so I simply had to remove that section of the perf board to fit it properly. Before I glued the circuit board to the 3D printed body, I had to introduce my sister's toothbrush with isopropyl alcohol to clean it from any grease that might have formed while soldering. After after that, I have screwed the servo in place, then I took very strong double sided sticky tape and pressed them together for a few seconds to bond them correctly, to get something looking like this. I attached the 3D printed arm and tested it again to make sure I haven't messed something up. And obviously it is going the wrong direction, but we will fix that later. Now we have to somehow simulate the touch, and for that you will need a piece of sponge like this, thin and flexible wire and aluminum foil. I have super glued them like this, and simply attached them on 3D printed arm where it's supposed to be. Second part of simulating the touch would be making aluminum foil plate that acts like a giant capacitor, and with the help of double sided sticky tape, taping the another end of wire to it, as well as taping the whole plate to the back of 3D printed body. Next, I wrote some simple code for the arm movement to test the moving capabilities so that I can later calibrate the arm to the point where it makes the best contact with the phone's screen and successfully snoozes the alarm off. And at the end that actually worked much better than I expected. Ok, I feel like I haven't explained enough of how this thing actually works, so if your brain is toast like mine is, just please don't skip the following minute of explaining. So what happens is that Arduino with the help of sound sensor captures surrounding audio in let's call it the sample time. Each 250 milliseconds Arduino captures one audio volume sample. He captures 20 of them and stores them just to later find their average value. And this way the device becomes resistant to surrounding noise, talking or bumping. If the average value is higher than it should be, which means the alarm went off, then the servo gets activated. And if you were asking yourself what the hell is this, let me just say that this part represents the capacitance of human body and this way the capacitive touch screen can recognize the touch. Yes, I didn't think I would need to do this, but without this it wouldn't work. Ok, with this in mind we are pretty much done. One last thing that we need to do is to plug it in before going to sleep and don't wake up on time the next morning.
And that's it. I really hope you liked this video. So if you did, please smash that like button to help me destroy YouTube's algorithm.